In this video, I'm going to hypnotize you through the screen to get rid of your fear. Whether that fear is something like a phobia, such as being afraid of spiders or afraid of clowns, or whether it's a psychological fear, such as the fear of rejection or the fear of failure, whatever you are afraid of, by the end of this video, you will no longer be afraid of. If you haven't seen my hypnosis through the screen videos before, I definitely recommend checking out a different one first, just to give yourself an experience of experiencing hypnosis through the screen like this, because this video will be specifically targeted to help you to overcome that thing you're afraid of. Now, hypnosis is not mind control. It's not something that's just gonna happen automatically or just magically work, but your focus, your concentration, and your willingness to experience it and for it to work will directly affect how effective it actually is. So if you want this to work, make sure that you're able to give your full concentration to this video. Get headphones if you think that will be helpful to you. Make sure you go somewhere that's quiet and you know that you won't be distracted and give this video your full attention and concentration. The more you put yourself into this video, the more that you will get out of this video. So pause this video now and set up whatever you need to do to make sure that this will be most effective. I'm gonna assume at this point you've done it. And so if you're ready to get hypnotized, let's jump right into it. So right now, I want you to sit back, lay back, lean back, put yourself in a position that's comfortable for you, and close your eyes now and focus on the sound of my voice. Just listen to my voice, begin to tune out any other distractions, any other thoughts, and just focus on me and only me. That's right. Begin to allow yourself to physically relax as you focus on my voice from the top of your head down to the tip of your toes. Let every muscle, every nerve, every fiber relax as you focus on the sound of my voice. That's right. Let yourself relax even deeper and even further now as you listen to my voice. Let yourself go. Let yourself relax. That's right. That's right. Let yourself become even more physically relaxed now as you focus even more on the sound of my voice. My voice begins to be the only thing that you hear. My voice begins to be the only thing that you concentrate on. Tuning out any other thoughts, any other distractions, focusing on me and only me. I'm going to count down from 10 to 1. Each number I count down from 10 to 1 will simply help you relax even deeper and even further than the number before it. Imagine you're standing at the top of a staircase in your mind. Each number that I count down from 10 to 1, you imagine taking a step down that staircase in your mind, telling yourself to go even deeper and even further with each number. Starting with the number 10, gather up all that amazing energy in your body into the number 9, going even deeper, taking a step down that staircase in your mind into the number 8. That's right, even more relaxed into seven, feeling even deeper into the number six. That's right, into the number five, letting yourself go, letting yourself drop, sinking, drifting, floating into the number four, even deeper, even further into the number three, even deeper all the way down now into the number two. That's right, the most relaxed you've been this entire time as you let yourself go into that final number one now as you focus completely on the sound of my voice. That's right. Let yourself relax, let yourself go, let yourself focus only on me and on the words that you hear from this video. That's right. Let yourself double that relaxation now, even deeper, even further. That's right. When you hear me say the word sleep, the word sleep just helps you relax even deeper, even further. That word sleep helps you drop all the way down. That word sleep doesn't mean you're actually asleep. It just means you let yourself get as relaxed as you are right now, just like you are when you are asleep as you focus on the sound of my voice. That's right. That's right. Go ahead and keep this feeling of relaxation, but I want you to just gently go ahead and one, two, three, awake, opening your eyes, feeling good. Focus right on me though, doing great. Let yourself take another deep breath in. And breathe out, let yourself sleep. Close your eyes, go right back to that feeling of relaxation. Let yourself sleep even deeper, even further. Sleep all the way down now, that's right. And as you relax even deeper, even further, I want you to focus the relaxation on your eyelids right now. Imagine your eyelids have become so heavy, your eyelids have become so stuck that they feel like they will not open. In fact, let your eyelids get so heavy and relaxed that they find that they become so heavy and relaxed that they don't want to open. They're stuck and they can and they won't open. And once you've allowed them to relax to that point, go ahead and test them out and try and notice that you can't open your eyes. They won't open. But that's okay. You can stop testing now. Just let yourself sleep even deeper, even further, all the way down. That's right. Focusing on the sound of my voice even deeper now. Focus on the sound of my voice now. Relax even deeper now. That's right. And as you feel this peace, as you feel how good it feels to be this relaxed, as you notice the freedom that comes with this state of concentration and focus, just let your attention stay completely locked on the sound of my voice. Imagine any other thoughts or distractions become bouncy 
As soon as they enter, they just bounce right out and your mind focuses completely on the sound of my voice in this state you're experiencing right now. And as you listen to my voice, I want you to think of that thing that you would like to overcome, that fear that holds you back. Again, maybe it's a fear of an object such as spiders or clowns or snakes. Maybe it's the fear of an idea, the idea of getting rejected, the idea of failing, the idea of disappointing somebody. Whatever that thing is, I want you to hold that idea in your mind. Think of that idea, because in a moment, that idea is going to get released. In a moment, you're going to let go of that fear. Let go of that thing holding you back, because the reality is that all fear is simply just a fear of an idea. Nobody's ever afraid of an actual object. They are simply afraid of the idea of the object. For example, if you were afraid of spiders, all it would take is simply just a stick to look like a spider in the background to freak out your mind and make you think that there's a spider there when in reality there is none. But with no spider there, your mind can experience it just like there was. Or if there really were a spider behind you and you had no idea, your mind simply wouldn't be afraid because it didn't know. Until that idea enters your mind and makes you think of the possibility, then that fear starts to come up because that's all it takes. All it takes is the idea of a fear for your mind to feel and experience the fear. And if we tell your mind, we teach your mind, and we show your mind that that idea is something that you hold power over, does not hold power over you, it is something you realize can be overcome. It is not something that controls you, but it is something that you control. And your mind up until now may not have realized that it had as much control over this fear as it did. But through this experience, your mind will realize that it does. Your mind will realize that your fear does not control you. You control your fear. And when you control your fear, you realize there's nothing to be afraid of because you are the one that is in control. That's right. You control your fear. As much as that fear sometimes feels overwhelming, feels daunting, feels intimidating, at the end of the day, you control your fear. That's right. Right now, I want you to think of that moment that caused you to start being afraid. Maybe your mind can jump right to that exact moment. Maybe it knows it was a, a triggering moment where you first started to become afraid of this thing or this idea. Or maybe your mind doesn't know. If your mind can't think of that specific first moment where you started to feel afraid of this thing, I want you to just create and imagine a similar moment that would cause you to be afraid. But I want you to hold an idea, a story, if you will, of the first time that you felt or experienced this fear. This story is called the moment that sparked that fear. Because every fire starts with a spark. The spark starts small and creates a big flame. But I want you to hold this story in your mind. Think of this story, think of this idea, this time that started your fear. And I want you to imagine right now that you're sitting in a movie theater. You're sitting in a movie theater with nobody else there it's a private theater just for you. And I want you to imagine that in a moment, this story, this thing that started your fear, is about to play on the movie screen. But before it starts to play, I want you to imagine that you've suddenly become like a ghost. I want you to imagine that you float out of your body sitting in this movie screen, sitting in this movie theater. And I want you to imagine just hovering like a ghost and you just notice and you look down and you see yourself sitting in this theater and you see yourself looking at the screen. And in a moment, that screen is going to start playing this very moment that started your fear. This moment that started it all. And as you hover over and watch yourself watching back this moment, you'll realize and you'll see exactly what caused you to become afraid. And your mind is good at making things bigger than they are. Because up until now, your mind has made this experience a really big deal, even if it didn't know, even if it was subconscious. Because it's the spark, it's the thing that started your fear. But as you watch it play back in just a moment, you'll realize that it was just a moment just like any other. And as that moment plays on the screen now, I want you to just watch yourself watching that event. That's right. As a ghost hovering over yourself, sitting in this theater, watching this event play on the screen. Just notice, just watch yourself watching this moment. And as it goes by, I want you just to allow yourself to see it happen on the screen. 
See yourself, see yourself seeing it happen. That's right. That's right. Just notice. Notice this experience and notice that moment. Watch for that moment where your mind suddenly became afraid. Almost as if your mind is going back in time to that very moment and seeing exactly how it made you feel. Until that moment, until that movie that's playing reaches the point where it ends. Reaches the point where that event is over. I want you to imagine I suddenly hit the rewind button and you can watch that same thing happening just in reverse. You just watched it happen at first, but now imagine it's going in the opposite direction. It looks kind of strange that it's going in reverse now. That same moment that started your fear is going in reverse. And for some reason, you don't know why it's going in reverse. It's going in the opposite direction. And it doesn't make sense. It looks how ridiculous going in the opposite direction until it reaches the very beginning now. And I want you to imagine I hit play again. This time it's in fast forward twice as fast as it goes twice as fast. It goes right through. And in fact, it's going so fast that again, it looks ridiculous how fast that this moment is going. It's playing just in such a speed that you can barely even make out what's happening. Everyone's talking really fast like Mickey Mouse and it's going really ridiculous and then it's going fast until it ends now. And I hit rewind in twice as speed. Now this time it's going twice as fast, just in reverse, twice as fast in reverse. Everyone's moving backwards, things are moving backwards, looking really ridiculous, looking really strange, going all the way back to the beginning now. And I want you to imagine as you still experience yourself as if you were a ghost floating above your body. Now imagine just floating back into that seat. Imagine just being in that theater, looking up at that screen, a little bit confused by what you just watched. You saw that moment at first, but then you saw it go backwards and then forwards and then backwards again. And imagine this time I play it in three times speed. Imagine it goes just as fast this time, three times speed all the way to fast, it goes so fast you can't make it, make it. it's just confusing all the way to the end and now. And I rewind again three times speed. As you're going backwards, people moving in just a weird way. It just look silly and you don't know what's, what's happening all the way back to the beginning now. That's right. And I fast forward again four times speed. It's going so fast. You can barely make out just moving the speed of lane. You don't know what happens. It's just over now. That's right. And rewind four times speed all the way back to the beginning. It's just so it's scrambled up and you're backwards and not squared. And it's done now. Just notice what you feel. Notice as that experience is just played in your mind back and forth and forward and backwards and backwards and forwards and all which ways and just looking ridiculous, it becomes scrambled. It's become a mess, it's become jumbled, it's become confused. See, by allowing your mind to allow that memory to go back and forth, your mind doesn't make sense of it in the same way that it used to. See, your mind would constantly replay that story every time you were in a situation where it might come up again. So your mind is there to protect you. Your mind is there to keep you safe. But every time you were back in an instance where this first thing happened, your mind would replay that story in your mind telling you to be afraid and using that fear as a mechanism to keep you safe when your mind doesn't realize that the fear is actually holding you back. So your mind doesn't know that your fear is gonna cause you harm. Your mind just assumes that it might and so in order to keep you safe, your mind makes this thing scary and big and holds you back. And it causes these feelings of anxiety and overwhelm because it plays back the story. But now that the story has been played back so many times, it's been scrambled forwards and backwards and fast and slow and, and in all so many which ways that your mind doesn't know anymore. Your mind no longer needs to and even can replay the story in your mind to create the fear. And now that this story it's no longer going to play. You'll find that when you're in an instance where you used to be afraid, you no longer will because the story can't play in your mind anymore. It's, you've confused it to the point that it just won't work. And as you think about this thing that you're afraid of, that even right now, your mind already starts to feel much less afraid than you used to because this story no longer has power over you. Because all fear is, again, simply just an idea. It's the story of the thing. It is not the thing that you are afraid of. It is the thing. It is the story. It is the idea of that thing. But as your mind already starts to notice and feel much more at ease than it ever used to with the idea of this thing, I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine that you're suddenly transported from this movie theater into a long hallway now. And in this hallway, it is filled with doors. And behind each door is a part of your mind. It's a memory, it's a thing, it's some part that represents who you are. But I want you to look down to the end of the hallway and notice this door at the end. And you know exactly what is behind this door as you start to walk towards it now. But it is not the thing that you are afraid of that is behind this door. It is simply just a representation of the thing that you are afraid of. How your mind has represented it to you. And as you open this door now, 
I want you to notice what is in this room. It is a completely empty room with the exception of a giant box. Notice this giant box. It's almost as big as you are, in fact. It is huge. But inside of this box is, again, not your fear, but the representation of your fear. Your mind is not afraid of the representation only of the fear, but not even of the fear, but just of the fear of the fear, the idea of the fear itself. But as you notice, this representation is something that actually makes you curious to notice what your fear looks like. You've never seen the fear. You've only just felt the fear. But inside this box is what the fear looks like, what it feels like, the representation of that fear. And now this box is huge and your mind starts to already think what, what is in this box, what could be in this box because it is so big. But in a moment, I'm going to have you open this box. And when you do, your mind is going to be quite surprised because what is in this box is not at all like what your mind thought it would be. As you open this box now, I want you to look inside and notice it is completely empty with the exception of a tiny rubber ball. That is all that is in this box is simply just a little rubber ball. And I want you to reach inside this box and take out this ball and hold it in your hand and notice how small it is and so small that it can fit in your hand. And your mind is a little bit puzzled why something as small as this rubber ball was put inside this giant box. That is your mind's doing. Your mind didn't know. Your mind wanted to keep you safe. So your mind put this little tiny rubber ball, this little tiny fear in this giant box to keep you away from it. So that it would hold you back. So that it would, or what it thought, keep you safe. But your mind didn't know that your life would be fine even with the fear. Your mind didn't know that you would be completely safe even with the fear. Your mind just was doing its best to try to keep you safe, but in the process, it held you back. Because your mind is not perfect, sometimes it makes mistakes, and yet, in this moment, you realize this thing that you've been afraid of, this representation, is so small that you can hold it in your hand. And I want you to actually just begin to squeeze that thing and notice how squishy it is. You can actually squeeze it and squish it in your hand and notice that that represents how much power you actually have over it. See, your mind represented it as this mystery thing inside a giant box, but when you actually investigated it, you found that it was nothing but this tiny squishy thing you can hold in the palm of your hand. That is all the fear ever is. It is simply just the idea. It is simply just a representation of something that is so small that feels so big. But when you realize that fear is something that is within you, it is something that you control, it is something that you hold power over and not the other way around. You realize how ridiculous it was to ever let that thing hold you back. And not because it's a reflection of you, but simply it's a reflection of the fact that your mind might not have known up until now, but now it does know that this fear is something that you can manage. This fear is something that you can control. This fear is something that will not and cannot hold you back any longer. And I want you to notice what's on the other side of the box is there's actually a safe embedded into this wall and the door of the safe is open right now. The size of the safe is actually pretty similar to the size of the ball, the representation of the fear you're holding in your hand right now. And your mind already knows exactly what it has to do is your mind is going to place this rubber ball, this fear, this representation of this thing you're holding in your hand inside the safe to let it go. Because when you let it go, it will let you go. When you let go of the fear, your fear will let go of you. I want you to take this rubber ball that you're holding in your hand, and I want you to just place it inside of the safe. Notice how perfectly it fits in that safe. It's just the right size. And in a moment, I'm gonna have you close the safe and spin the dial on the front to lock it forever. There is no lock on this safe. It is a combination which your mind does not and cannot and will not ever know. And your mind knows that as soon as you spin the dial on this lock, as soon as you close that door and spin the dial, that is it. That is the end. This fear cannot and will not ever come back because it can't. How could it? If you choose to lock it up in a way that you can never gain access to again, there's no reason, there's no way for this fear to ever come back. And even if it were to come back, which it can't, 
Your mind knows how small it is. Your mind knows how much you control it. Your mind knows how much you hold power over it in a way that it didn't realize until now. But I want you to close that safe in a moment. I'm gonna count down from five to one. Each number I count down from five to one prepares you to close this safe. When I reach the number one, you slam that door shut and you spin that dial. Five, beginning to anticipate this fear being locked away forever. Four, as you get ready to shut down this thing that used to shut down you to the number three, as you know and you start to feel the peace and the freedom that will come with no longer being held back by this idea into the number two, as you get ready to now close that door at the number one, slam it shut, spin that dial, locking that safe, locking that fear forever. Notice what feeling has replaced that fear and notice, notice that feeling of freedom. 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 See, living with this fear was sort of like living in a jail cell that was unlocked the whole time and your mind just didn't know. Your mind didn't know, but that's okay. But now your mind knows that there's a door is not locked and never was. And you can leave this prison cell that you've been living inside that this idea of the fear is constructed for you, it is no longer home, it is no longer a place for you. Instead, you get to walk out into freedom. You get to walk out into possibility. You get to walk out into love. You get to walk out into life. Because fear is no more. Fear is gone. Even now, as you think about that thing you used to be afraid of, notice that thinking about it is completely different than it was before. Thinking about it is just like thinking about any other thing. That fear does not control you anymore. You have controlled it. You have shown it to his boss. You know that, that fear will not, cannot hold you back any longer. Fear is gone. And in its place is freedom. In its place is purpose. In its place is possibility. Because without that fear, think about what's possible. Think about where your life can go, where your life can be now moving forward without this fear, without this thing ever holding you back ever, ever, ever again. You're free. You are free and with this freedom means life. Notice this feeling, this good feeling that you feel right now. It's yours. It's yours. In a moment, I'm gonna count up from one to 10. Each number I count up from one to 10. Beginning to feel less relaxed, less hypnotized, releasing yourself from the state of the final number 10, but also with each number, further integrating this freedom, further integrating this peace, further integrating the possibility of what you can do now moving forward without this fear, now that this fear no longer holds you back. Starting with the number one, feeling that freedom, feeling less relaxed and more confident into the number two, feeling full of energy, full of life into the number three, feeling this possibility into the number four, into that number five, knowing what you can do, who you can be, what's possible, into the number six, knowing who you can love, how you can love, how you can live into the number seven in a way that's new, in a way that's exciting, in a way that's boundless into the number eight, feeling so good and amazing, incredible in every single way into the number nine, so good and amazing as you get ready to release yourself from hypnosis and now opening your eyes at the final number 10, eyes open, wide awake, feeling good, feeling free. And I want you just to feel that freedom that you now feel, with that fear now being gone. And I hope that this video, this experience was helpful for you. And if this worked, if you felt that you no longer were afraid of this thing you used to be, I want you to leave a comment and tell me how this video affected you, how it helped you. I always love to hear how these videos are positive for you guys. And if you want me to make more hypnosis through the screen videos like this to help with more things, I have other videos like this to help you with confidence, help you with anxiety, but I'd love to make more to help you guys become better. Because at the end of the day, hypnosis is simply just a tool to help you to create a belief. Whether that belief is positive or negative, our mind tends to naturally experience negative beliefs. Our mind naturally hypnotized ourselves to feel fear. 
your mind hypnotized you to be afraid, but now you've undone the hypnosis and created a new hypnosis, a new belief to no longer be afraid. So if you want me to create more videos like this to help hypnotize you to experience new beliefs, new possibilities in other areas, I'd love to hear how I can continue to help you guys, serve you guys, and make your lives better. So again, if this worked for you, super excited that you no longer are held back, but you're free. So until the next video, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful for you and uh, enjoy the freedom. No fear anymore. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.